So you're building a new PC and you need to figure out which motherboard that you're going to put into it. Well, I'm here to help. Today we're gonna to go over the common Intel and AMD chipsets, figure out which one that you can put into your system, and then also help you figure out what features you should look for in a motherboard. That way you don't end up spending $300 for a motherboard for a $100 processor. So if any or all that interests you, stick around. So hello everyone, I'm Joe and welcome to Pinky Tech. Uh, today we're looking at motherboards. And so we're gonna go over uh, basically Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series processors, as well as the current 10th gen of Intel processors, and just take a look and see what motherboards are out there and what you should be looking for in a motherboard. Now I know sitting through Intel and AMD is probably a bit tedious, so I will have timestamps down below that you can check out and skip to whichever section that you need assistance with. All right, so starting off, we're gonna look at AMD chipsets. Uh, this will cover the AMD 3000 as well as 5000 series uh, processors. Keep in mind, uh, AM4, which is the current socket set from AMD, has been around for quite a while, all the way from Zen 1 uh, or Zen or whatever they called it back then, all the way to the new 5000 series processors or Zen 3. So we have a lot to cover, so we're gonna stick with 3000 and 5000. However, I will have links down below to the product comparison pages, so if you're running maybe an older first gen or second gen Ryzen chip, you can actually look in there and see the comparisons. I will do the same for the Intel chips, so those will be down below in the description as well, so that you can kind of compare and contrast the different chipsets for yourself, but I'll kind of go over the mainstream ones for you. All right, so we're gonna start off with Ryzen. Ryzen, as far as chipsets, are pretty simple. Uh, if you want to overclock, get anything that doesn't end in a 20. So instead of doing the A520 motherboards, go for the A5, or I'm sorry, the B550 or the X570 motherboards. Now keep in mind that the Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series chips also support B450 motherboards, and you can overclock on B450 motherboards as well. So that is still another viable option for you. Just be careful because some of the manufacturers have not released a microcode update to support the Ryzen 5000 series processors. So you may have to wait just a little bit longer, but AMD has promised B or AMD has promised uh, 5000 series processor support on B450 motherboards. So you may be asking yourself, okay, so I can use a a520, B450, B550, or X570 motherboard, why would I pick one over the other? Well, it's pretty simple. So take out overclocking. Uh, you can get rid of the A520, and then you can overclock because all AMD chips are actually unlocked, so you can overclock on any of them. So now it comes down to between B450, B550, and X570, what's the major differences? And really, it comes down to one thing, PCIe 4.0 support. So if you're looking for PCIe 4.0 support, you would wanna go with the B550 or the X570. And why would you choose an X570 over a B450, or a B550 rather? It really comes down to the number of PCIe lanes that are on an X570 motherboard. So do keep in mind that the X570 chipsets do typically have better cooling, better VRMs and power delivery. So if you're going with an X3900 or I'm sorry, 3900X or 3950X or the equivalent 5000 series chips, it may make more sense to go with that higher level motherboard since you are using a higher level CPU. That being said, let's say you're using a 3700 or the new 5800X or you know an eight core 16 thread processor, B550 is probably gonna work out just fine for you. Just keep in mind that the PCIe 4.0 lanes are actually going through the chipset and not through the processor. And really that's the main difference on the AMD motherboards. So if you're looking for a recommendation, let's say you're running a 3100X or something like that, I would probably go for the A520 motherboards, assuming you're not going to overclock. If you are looking to overclock, go with the B450 or B550. And if you're doing a 12 or 16 core one, I would say go with the X570 motherboards. All right, now let's get into the Intel chips. So for the Socket 1200 or the current 10th gen processors, you're looking at four different chipsets on the mainstream platforms. You've got the H410, the H470, the B460, and the Z490. Now for Intel chipsets, you pretty much just flip everything I said about AMD on its head. <laughs> really what you wanna do is if you wanna overclock, you have to one, have a K-SKU uh, for your Intel processor because those are the only overlock processors, but then also you need to have a Z490 motherboard. 
Z490 motherboards are the only motherboards that actually allow overclocking on the Intel platform. This goes back to Z390, Z2190, whatever. Essentially, if it's not a Z series motherboard on Intel, you don't get overclocking. So unless you're gonna have a K-series processor, you can eliminate that one, and then you're looking at the B460, the H470, and the H410. So now you may be asking yourself, what would be the difference between the H170, the H470, and the B460? Well, there's really not a whole lot of difference between them. Really, it comes down to memory bandwidth, uh, which on the H470 is a little bit more, but that's about it. The B460 uh, supports dual channel, the H470 supports dual channel, and the H410 is the only one that actually only supports one DIMM per channel, so you don't actually get dual channel memory on that chipset. So if you are going to do an extreme budget build, let's say a 10100 or something like that, you may want to go with a super budget motherboard, which would be the H410. Uh, outside of that, you're really looking at the B460 or H470. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I almost exclusively use the B460 motherboards. I'm actually pairing one in my next build video with a uh, 10100, even though you could get away with the H170, just because there's a lot more support for extra memory uh, configurations, cooling, stuff like that. You don't really need it with that chip, but it's a really good option as a motherboard. So as far as recommendations for that, Pretty much everything I use Intel that's not a KSQ gets a B460 and everything else gets a Z series motherboard. Now you can overclock memory on a Z490 motherboard even though you don't have an unlocked processor. However, those motherboards are typically over $200 or $225. And for me, getting a 3200 megahertz kit to run on it uh, just instead of a 2933 or something like that doesn't really justify the added cost for it. So. It's really up to you, it's your money to spend, but for maybe 10% FPS, so another six or eight FPS on most games, like I said, I can't justify the cost to it. All right, and that's pretty much it for the chipset comparisons themselves. Once again, the links will be down below, so you can use those and look over you know, PCIe lanes per CPU or, or per motherboard, whatever you wanna do, uh, just as some extra research in case you wanna take another look. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let me get over to the Newegg website and I'll show you what I like to do uh, when I'm picking out a motherboard. All right, so when I'm looking for computer parts, I really like using Newegg's website. Uh, it allows me to filter down a lot using their advanced or their power search, whatever they're calling it nowadays, um, and really be able to limit the number of results that I'm seeing. Whereas if you're looking at even Micro Center, their website is pretty decent, um, but doesn't really, it only shows you what they have in stock versus kind of a lot more uh, supply. And especially with Amazon, you type something in the Amazon, good luck trying to narrow down the results for what you're looking for there. Um, so we're gonna do a quick example of what I like to do to find motherboards to for consideration for a build, um, just using the power search inside Newegg. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna know what my processor is. In this case, we're using, like I said, I've got a build coming up. We're gonna use the Intel 10th gen, the 10100. And so that is socket LGA 1200. So we're gonna go ahead and first thing is limit by that and then hit apply. And as you can see, it starts immediately filtering down your results. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is, I know this is a micro ATX build, so I'm gonna go ahead and select micro ATX. And then I'm also gonna look at my chips here, my chipset. So as you can see here, it has the chipsets that we have went over. So I'm gonna choose the Intel B460. Like I said, if you run a really budget deal, you can go for an H410. However, B460 is really the sweet spot with the Intel tension motherboards that you know, are not overclocking. So we're gonna hit apply there. And then the other thing is we wanna start looking at preferences. So as I scroll down the list here, I'm actually gonna do four slots for memory. And then I'm not gonna worry about really much of anything else. Um, if you wanted a board with wireless LAN, you can go ahead and select that and that would help you out. You would have that information. Uh, if you wanted to do audio channels, stuff like that, this is pretty much only one option at this point. So you don't really have to worry about that. Um, but that would be what I would do is I would just keep going down however many M.2 slots you need, things like that. Um, you could work your way down the list here, but we're just going to set it with the four memory slots and hit apply. And then you're going to see the motherboards actually start to appear. Now for myself, what I look for in a motherboard is a couple of things. So I want a heating, uh, a heat sink over the VRM or over the power deliveries. 
Um, so I'm not going to pick this board, even though it was $79. Now, if we're using a 10-100 like we are in this example, we could use that board. It would be absolutely fine. We're not overclocking or doing anything like that. Um, but this part of it is really specific to anything. Um, I like having a VRM solution or a heatsink over it because on AMD boards where you can overclock, it makes sense to have something there to help it out. That being said, use your judgment. You could get away with it on some of them. Um, but that being said, so we're going to look at that. The other thing we're going to do is we're actually going to click on some of these pictures. So let's just click on this uh, board right here from ASRock. And if I take a look, what I'm looking at is the layout of the board. Uh, so I've got USB 3 headers down on, let's go ahead and click on this and zoom in a bit. So I've got a USB 3 header over on this side. My SATA ports are here. So that's kind of all in the right locations. The other thing I'm going to look at is where are my fan headers at? And so as you can see, there looks like one down here and there's probably one up in this corner. Let's take a look. Uh, we've got the CPU one right here. And as you can see on this board, that's probably going to be a tight fit. So just something to kind of take a look at and see, you know, where your stuff is. Um, other than that, I'm looking around here. My USB is in where the spots where you would expect it to be. Uh, same with the front panel headers. I don't know why they have two random SATA ports over here, but eh, say la vie, I guess. Um, and then do we have any uh, RGB, ARGB headers, things like that, if that is something that you're putting into your build. So I would kind of check the layout of all those because that is going to kind of dictate one, do you have ARGB and RGB? Uh, two, maybe they don't have enough fan headers, so you're going to need a splitter for your fan headers. Um, or, you know, just other things uh, along that line for cable management. If you're going to put in additional cards, things like that. Um, the other thing I kind of take a look at is where your M.2 slots are placed, because that'll dictate whether or not you can actually put in an M.2 slot without having to take out your graphics card. That's not a real big deal to me, but it is something to consider. Um, the other thing that I would take a look at is your I.O. Um, this one looks like it's not on here, so that's awesome. Uh, let's get another example for that. Uh, maybe go back here uh, to this board right here. And I can actually see the I.O. on here. And so I've got USB ports. I've got, looks like two of them right there. Let me see if we can get a better picture of this. Yeah, so we've got a couple USB 3, a couple USB 2. It just kind of becomes, you know, how much are you plugging into it, things of that nature, but all stuff that you should consider while purchasing a motherboard. All right, guys, so I hope this has been helpful in helping you pick out a motherboard. Uh, if it was, make sure you like the video and also leave a comment down below. Is there something that you look for in motherboards that I missed? Uh, be interested to know. Uh, also, let me know what build you're planning next. Uh, like I said, I will have the links down there for the comparisons for the chipsets because that's the, one of the most important things to help you figure out uh, which motherboard to pair with which processor. Um, I also have Amazon affiliate links below to some of the uh, motherboards that I like and that I've used in the past. And if you do click on those and purchase something from there, it does help out the channel as it gives a small kickback to me. Costs nothing extra to you and all the money I get from that is just going back into the channel. Um, I haven't actually made any money off of it yet, but I promise you if I do, it'll go back into the channel. Um, other than that, like I said, make sure you like the video, share it with your friends uh, that can help them out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe while you're down there. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next video.